Let's go ahead and get through these three problems. Our first one asks for the x-intercept. Where does it cross the x-axis? I think the key for this one is to make sure that we label it as a point. Looks like we got a point here and a point there. Usually we don't do things graphically, but if all we have is a graph, then we'll go ahead and take it that way. So our point of intercept on the x-axis is going to be x comma y. And we know as an intercept, the other letter has to be zero. So an x-intercept means the y has to be zero. And it looks like we have an intercept at negative one. And we have another intercept. We have two intercepts here. And like I said, a zero for the y is required. And negative six is, looks like where it hits the uh, uh, x-axis at. Next one, we are asked to find the y-intercepts of f of x and g of x, and then asked which one is larger. So we'll go ahead and look at the graphical one first. Looks like we have a y-intercept at five on the y-axis, and remember, the other letter is zero. So a y-intercept means zero for x, and for the y, we have a value of five. So the y-intercept in this case is basically five. <clears throat> and then on the other one, g sub x, here's our graph right here. Do you remember what I said? For a y-intercept, we look for what? The other letter is zero. So a y-intercept means we're looking for zero for the x. And there we are, zero for the x. That means this right here is our y-intercept. And we would call that zero comma two. And then which one is larger? This is higher up on the y-axis. So the answer is f of x has a larger y-intercept. Our last problem, let's take a look. We have three functions here. We have the f of x function, g of x, and h of x. We are asked to order smallest to largest maximum. Well, let's just take a look here. And we can see that this is a maximum. It has a point that's taller than all the other points. It's higher up. Uh, this one right here has a negative in front of the x squared. That means it is a parabola facing down, so it has a maximum. And on this one right here, we're looking at the outputs. And we kind of see that there's a 5, and then it has like a symmetry off of that 5. So you can kind of imagine it's a parabola peaking at 5. So in this case, we can see that since it has that symmetry, we know that this point right here is the maximum for g of x. Uh, this point right here, we're mainly concerned with the, the y values. So that's about a three point, I'll just go ahead and shoot in the air and say about 3.5. So that's an approximate 3.5 on the y-axis where that has that maximum. And then here's the, the little bit more tricky one, having the, the function uh, only in, in the equation format. So for the equation format, let's see if I have enough room down here. We need to look at uh, the, the vertex and the formula for the vertex is vertex for parabolas. Vertex means either the the bottom or the top of the parabola is negative b over 2a is the x component and the y component is I take this part and I plug it in back into the function. So negative b over 2a, whatever that answer is, it gets plugged back into the function. Sometimes they call this the axis of symmetry because it cuts straight through the parabola at that spot. So this is the same though for vertex. So we'll go ahead and what I like to do is label. So this is the ax squared plus bx plus c is the labeling that goes with a quadratic or a squared equation. So now you can clearly see what a is and what b is. Those are the ones we need. So I'll go ahead and plug those in. So I'm looking at uh, let's rewrite the formula, negative b over 2a. This gets turned into negative. a is a, uh, we're at b. b is a negative 11, so that's negative, negative 11. 
Notice I said negative twice. It's negative, whatever that is. If that's negative, then that's two negatives. <clears throat> All over two times a, a is negative five. So I'd go ahead and calculate that. A negative and a negative make a positive in that case. And two times negative five is negative 10. Uh-oh, I should have brought my calculator. Looks like we're gonna need a calculator to plug that in. <clears throat> so now I know what the x component of my vertex is, but we need the y component. The y tells us which one's larger or smaller or higher or up. So I'll go ahead and now I need to plug that in to an equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some work right over here. And my f of x, I'll rewrite my function, is negative five x squared minus 11 x plus three. And I'm gonna use my trick I used last time, which is a skeleton. So that's f of, and I'm plugging in negative 11 over 10 into this. So that's negative five parentheses wherever I see an x. So wherever I see that x, I put parentheses, and then it's a lot easier to plug in the negative 11 over 10. Negative 11 over 10, negative 11 over 10. I need to grab a calculator real quick. <clears throat> Got it? All right, so order of operations now. Order of operations, I'm gonna do the exponent first. Uh, that's gonna be negative five is still there. 11 times 11, well, this, I don't have to worry about the negative because it's being squared. 11 times 11 is 121. 10 times 10 is 100. Minus uh, the negative 11 and negative 11. We multiply to the top of the fraction. It's kind of like 11 over one. One of my shortcuts is if you just have a, a whole number that's not a fraction, it multiplies to the top of the fraction. But you can always put a one on the bottom and multiply straight across. All that turns into negative 11 times negative 11 is positive 121. The denominator stays the same, plus three. And then right here, uh, five goes into 100 uh, 20 times. So this turns into negative 121 over 20, plus 121 over 10, plus three. Uh, so we can keep kind of working at it if we needed to. Hopefully we are allowed to use a calculator on this one. So I'll go ahead and uh, negative 121 divided by 20 plus 121 divided by 10 plus three and I get 181 over 20, which is the same as 9.05 is what I got. And so this is the Y, this is the output. This is the Y uh, as like a maximum on that parabola. So then we look at the other two, we got 9.05, we have 5, and we have 3.5. We're asked to order it from smallest to largest. So the smallest one is h of x, comma. The next largest is g sub x. And then the next largest is f of x. Thank you.